Good morning. It's good to see you. Last week we were still winter, and this today we're back in the summer. So, and spring has got to get in there somewhere. We're glad to see you in this nice, cool place to, to worship God, to worship the one who created us, to worship the one who, who loves us even though we are unlovable at times. The one who sent his son Jesus to die for us so that we could be reconciled to him. We can know God. We can know forgiveness. We can know uh, what true love is, true hope is, true peace is because of that amazing grace, that goodness that he has shown to us through Jesus. So I invite you to stand this morning as we read the scripture talking about that, that grace that God has given to us. So let's read this together. For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. A lot of great things up in there. We are saved through faith. It's not by our works, and God is the one who even gives us that faith so we can see Him, see the truth, and respond in faith to Jesus. So we have been saved. Then. So let's sing this great song that we all probably know. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. <coughs>
up there. So, but thank you for singing anyway. And that's the great thing of God's grace, because we need it. I need it. We we know we need it. Um, if you don't think you need God's grace, then you need to examine yourself, because we need God's goodness. We need His mercy. We need His love. And it is only found, as you see this, in Christ alone. There's no other way. Only through Jesus Christ can we we know this. Oh, my God. 
stand in my own strength. Instead of running to him, instead of falling upon his grace and his mercy. Because I think we look at the world around us, I think you know the story, maybe don't, of, of this song of Horatio Spafford. He, he wrote this after his son had died in the Chicago fire. He lost his wealth. He, he gained back his business money, but then he sent his family across to England, and he was going to meet them later, but on the road, on the seas over, ship went down, his three daughters died. And as he went across to, to meet his wife again, he, he wrote this, uh, this song, just saying, it doesn't matter, uh, because God does have us. God's grace never fails. Uh, God's grace is always there, and he says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And so, let's sing, it is well, my soul.
Thank you. you. May be seated. Children, come up to the front, <coughs> please. <coughs> Word. 
Lord, joining with his people, doing the right things, and he'll clean up your life, right? He's here. Yay! That's what we want to do, right? So let's pray. God, thank you. Even when our life is full of yuck and choices that we made that were bad, you are so faithful to forgive and help us get back on the right direction of serving you, thinking on things of you, and putting our focus on God things and not dwelling on things of this earth. Help us all to do that, especially for these young kids as they start out. They're bombarded with so much. Help them to think, what would Jesus do? What did Jesus do? What does God's word say? Give us your strength and help us to do it in your strength. And I ask these things in your name. Amen. Okay, uh, <coughs> that's Ruth has your worship bags and then go sit with your family right here. Sorry, we got Some people have trypanophobia. 
Fear of it, not turkeys. Do you have a fear of turkeys? <laughs> <laughs> These are common, common fears. Fear of injections or needles. Uh, <laughs> Some people are that way. Uh, astrophobia. Some people may have this tonight. That's the fear of thunder or lightning. Some dogs have that. Uh, agoraphobia. That's a fear, I mean, the definition is a fear of open space or crowded space. It's, it's, it's kind of both in that. Mysophobia. That's my second. Now it's germs and dirt. One of my favorite shows was Monk on television a long time ago. He was, he was there. Uh, social phobia. It's just a fear of social things. They don't want to be around people. It's any kind of social event. You know, so there are great people that like to be in there. So that's kind of the top ten. There is one more that I think is very pertinent, especially in, in our uh, setting. Uh, the pastor calling them the great phobia. It's funny. Sometimes, you know, you look around, people are afraid. You know. <laughs> Don't go on me! But we, we all have these fears, and some of these fears are so real. And this is a real one. Um, and then we have these fears, and they just seem so real to people. That spider is going to kill me, right? Uh, the darkness. There is something in the dark that's going to grab me, take me down, and kill me. That snake's going to bite me. It's going to ever bite, it's going to come up, slither me, bite me. Strangle me and then swallow me. This little snake is going to swallow me. Uh, but I mean, it's just so many different fears fear of death, or fear, fear of somebody else dying. And, and these fears, it is an emotion, it's a belief, but it can be crippling at times. When COVID hit, fears went sky high. I, I was just thinking about this. Last time I really talked about fear was the week before. COVID really shut people down. Because we didn't know about it. And I, I, and I went back and looked at that sermon, and I was like, and I was kind of just a little naive about it, but I was talking about the fear. We shouldn't be afraid when things come into our life. And that's why I want to expand on this. But when COVID hit, really, fear gripped the nation, gripped the world, gripped our lives. And again, some, some it just crippled them, where it it didn't shut you down completely, but it, it slowed you down a lot. But it did stop some. Some who just shut themselves up from all life, from normality. And we all have fears. Every one of us have fears. We all have fears. Now some, we deal with our fears, fears a little bit. Sometimes people are just a little bit afraid, but there's fears. And some are terrified about some of those situations. They're very real. The spiders, the dogs, the darkness, all that is going to kill me. Again, the darkness. I mean, even sometimes I, I walk into a, a dark church building and get this little grip, you know. I mean, you're supposed to be in this place like this, but it's still darkness. You know, mine is more, a little claustrophobia comes in at times, and I just have to deal with it. But what do we do with this fear? And that's the key if we all have fears, what do we do with them? Because some, again, as I said, some will shut down completely. And, and then that affects other people. That affects their life and affects other people. Because they've shut down. Some will distract themselves with other things so they don't have to think about that fear. So instead of truly dealing with the fear, it's just kind of pushing it off away so you don't have to do, deal with it. I'm just going to take my mind over here instead of over there. Some will try to escape by dulling their minds with excessive alcohol or drugs or just whatever just to, to take themselves away from that fear that has gripped them. Well, I want to tell you a great truth this morning from God's Word. Not my words, but God's Word. And this is what he says in Psalm 34, 4. I sought the Lord. 
He answered me and rescued me from all, all my fears. I mean, isn't that awesome? God can rescue you from all your fears. That is huge. All your fears. But it comes down to, do I believe this? Do you believe that God can actually rescue you from that fear that you've had so long in your life? Whatever it is. And these were just some fears. We have a lot of other fears. We have fears for our family, fears for ourselves, fears for our, our community, our state, our nation, the world. This is God's word. But I want to tell you, you can't just, I'm claiming that verse. They're gone. I want to see how it works for you. All right? I'm just going to ask God, rescue me. They're gone. Until the next time you see the spider or dog and nervous. And I'm not saying this is not true, because this, this is a deep verse. This is reality. This is God's truth. But we have to look at the fullness of God. We can't. This is a bumper sticker truth, right? That's, I'm saying you just pull this out and say this, this is what it is. But we have to understand where this is coming from. So we're going to look at Psalm 34. Now, Psalm 34 is a great psalm to look at all. And I'm actually going to look more at the context of the psalm next week as we look at David and the things that he went through. But going back to the first verse, he writes, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Now, once we saw that, that verse a minute ago, it said, He rescued me from all my fears. This is the same all. I will bless the Lord at all the time, all times. And that's kind of like what we're doing soon up here. It's, it's a focus on something that's different than what you normally have been doing. His praise will always be on my lips. That's a different focus than focusing on fear. And again, that's, that's hard. Because when the fear is there, when it is gripping you bad, you don't want to focus anywhere else but on that. That spider right there, in practicality, is greater than God. That darkness is greater than God. That doctor and his report is greater than God. And so we, we focus on things in the world because that's where we, we live. By the way, that's the greatness of heaven. All that's gone. And so God is the number one focus of all these people. But this is, this is how we start moving our life to, to getting rescued from our fears. It's changing our perspective of this desire. I will Bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. And this is on who he is. This is not talking about of what he's done or will do or can do. But who he is. And we've talked about that recently. This is the greatness, the goodness of God. Verse 2 and 3. I will boast in the Lord. The humble will hear and be glad. Boast in the Lord. Again, that's a different focus. And other people will, will enjoy that. And so as you you only boast in what you believe in, what you hold up high, that's what you boast in. And that's why, again, I've been talking about this. What we boast about is really what our focus is. And if we're always praising God, if we're always looking at who He is, that's what we're going to boast in. That's who we're going to boast in. So proclaim the Lord's greatness with me. Let us exalt his name together. Now this is another key. All the other ones said, I, I, I. This is us. In, in gaining a help, gaining a rescue from those things that are holding us down, there is a lot of I involved. But it's us. Because we, we come and we hear 
different people's testimonies of what God has been doing in their life. And some of those things that he has rescued you from. Some of that is the rescuing us as we focused upon him from the sin that's been in our life, the sin focus. And now we're thinking about the things that are lovely and wonderful and, and God things. And we hear that from one another. We, we see people who have gone through some hard times physically with sicknesses. And, and God has sustained them. God has brought them through. Sometimes God has healed them. And sometimes God has taken them home. And we, we, we thank God for those things. But we're here together to do this. To focus upon God. Of who He is. And that's why that next verse says, I sought the Lord... Because we're already praising Him, we're already exalting Him, we're thinking about who He is and what He's done, and we're doing that together, and now we have this togetherness that helps me individually seek the Lord, call upon Him, call for my rescue from those things that are ripping me, that are holding me down, that are that, that's just that darkness that's all around me. I sought the Lord, and David said, He answered me. He answered me. Because I love it when God answers other people's prayers. When God helps others. So I love it when God answers my prayers. When He helps me. And, and that's where God is. He, he has that love for us individually has that love for us as a whole. And so it's not just for us, but it is us individually too. It is for me. That's why I seek the Lord, but I, I want that help from others. Then this next verse, verse 5, those who look to him are radiant with joy, and their faces will never be ashamed. When you have fear, do you have joy? Nope. All I have is dread. When I'm fearing something, I'm not like, woohoo, man, look at this darkness, look at the spiders, the dogs, the, the doctors, all that, woo. No, it's like, I'm just down. I have dread. I am, I'm collapsing. I'm secluded. I am crippled. I am all those things because of the fear that's in my life. But when we are focused on God, when we're calling out to Him and say, God, deliver me, life changes. Life changes from the dirt to, to clear, but dread changes from dread to joy to facial expressions to life exuding joy. The fears have been taken away We've been rescued because we are focusing on God and bring joy. Again, this is not just something quick, a quick fix. Today I'm going to praise him, and here we go. And he, he's up, and tomorrow's another day. And guess what? Those, those things, those areas, those people that, that are gri gripping us and bringing fear into our life are still going to be there. And so this is why the focus on God individually as a whole, as a body of Christ. It's so important. Next verse says, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him from how many of his troubles? All. I mean, all his troubles. But again, we, we don't believe that. We do not believe that God can do this. He cannot relieve me from, rescue me from all my fears. He cannot deliver me from all my troubles. He just cannot. Because that spider, that dog, that sickness, that, that darkness, whatever, is bigger than God and who He is and what He's done. And that's why getting that mindset, putting more and more of, of God and who He is into our mind, into our heart, into our, our life, into our life together individually, Starts changing our focus. Starts changing the truth. And we have to continue to say, man, I'm a poor man, God. I've got nothing. But I need to cry to you. And God, I know you can help. 
You are everything. You have everything. Then the very next verse. Psalm 34, 7. The angel of the Lord encamps. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. And he rescues them. All right, so now, so he's, he's rescued me from my fears, and now I'm supposed to fear him? This is a, a word that's it's kind of hard for us to know God. We are to fear him. So are we supposed to have dread? Are we supposed to be crippled and isolated? Well, in the Bible, the, the word fear can mean several different things. It can refer to someone who's terrified, like we've been talking about, They're, that emotion, that, that reality of being afraid of something more powerful. It can also mean respect in the way, in the Bible, again, a servant fears his master, and in that fear, he's serving him faithfully. And fear can also mean the the reverence or awe that a person has in the presence of, of somebody who's greater. And this fear of God is all of them. We should fear God in a terrifying way because He is our creator. He has all power. And God could crush us because He's all powerful. I'm, that's why I'm thankful for the grace of God. I deserve crushing. I deserve my bones and body to be nothingness. But God's grace is there. But my fear of Him, as I'm talking about here, I need to understand that He is almighty. He has all power. And that's good in one way, but also terrifying in one way. But also the respect. I tell you, people have, have lost the respect for God. I'm talking about people in churches who've lost respect for God. He's just that Santa Claus or whatever. Just God, give me, give me, give me. There's no respect for who he is. That he is almighty. He's creator. That he is the one who sent his son, Jesus, to die for us. And that leads us to that awe of him. That this terrifying, almighty God loved us pitiful, poor, rebellious, sinful people that he sent his son to. That's, that's an awe and respect that should drive us to fear Him. The angel of the Lord means that the presence of God, there are angels that, that come and go, we don't see them, but this is really talking about who God is. He rescues those who fear Him. Now, He also rescues people who don't fear Him. And they don't care about God. God is grace. God's grace and mercy is out there, even the people who are horrible. Because his kindness, the Bible says, is to lead them to repentance as it led us to repentance. Where have you been going to deal with your fears? Who have you been listening to to deal with your fears? And I'm not talking about get rid of the people in the world. But they should be secondary to God. God has gifted people to help Christian psychologists to listen, but also use God's principles to help. But our first response should be to God. We, we fear Him. Nothing in this world will truly really take away your fears, but the world says, here, try this, try this, try this. That's why the Psalm 34, verse 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. How happy, how joyful, how blessed is the person who takes refuge in Him. Taste and see. Redonda is a, a food photographer. She cooks a lot of different things. And she says, taste this. Yeah. Sometimes she says, taste this asparagus. I say, no. <laughs> we, we, I, we do keep trying. It's just like, no, it's wrong. It's wrong. 
I have a fear of asparagus, yes. <laughs> uh, but tasting here is not just that. It's tasting to have more. To see who God is. To see Him and taste, to know His goodness, His greatness. To understand His rescuing you because He does rescue us. He does help us. And we, we look to those things. We look to the examples in the scriptures and, and around us. People who have taken refuge in Him and how joyful and blessed they are. Having this relationship with Him. And again, that's through Christ. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead, you will be saved. That's that relationship. That's how you taste Him. That's how you understand who he is, by looking who Jesus is, what he has done for us, taking the penalty for our sins upon the cross. And then not by our works, but by grace we are saved through faith in what Jesus did. That's the beginning of the focus of God. The beginning of really overcoming fears. And I said, we're going to start looking at, at different people in the Bible the fears that they had, and how God helped them, how God rescued them from their fears in practical ways. But, but today, that first step is that focus. Where are you focused when those fears come in? And again, when sometimes we, we diminish those fears, but they're real to us. I mean, we do need to Kind of respect spiders and snakes and dogs. We need to understand them and respect those. We need to respect the darkness. We need to respect all those things. But if they're coming into our life so much that it's crippling us, and again, it's beyond those. I think more of our fears are beyond those things. We need to go to God. Say, God. Help me in this. We're going to sing the song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. We sing the first verse and then we kind of play around with one more verse, singing about the spirit, but that's, that's it. Turning our eyes to Jesus, finding strength in Him, our hope in Him, our rescue in Him. First for our salvation, for our life, for our eternity, but then also every day, life. Let's pray. God, we thank you that this verse of you rescuing us from fears is true. Father, we all have them. We've all hit them. We've all been crippled by them. And Lord, it's so easy to talk about other people with their fears without dealing with our own. So Lord, I pray that we come to you, that our eyes would be focused to I do pray, God, for someone who's never committed their life to you, that this would be the day of salvation for them, <coughs> through faith in what you did, <coughs> turning from their own life, their own ways, to you in your ways. But Father, I pray for all of us that we would gain more today of focus upon you, of looking to you, of pouring your ways into our life as we seek you and ask you to rescue us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing this, this hymn. <laughs>
I need this study too. I have fears. And so as I continue to look to God, His Word, I know He will rescue me from all my fears. Call it.
they, they've gone through a lot of changes lately, but a, a friend of mine is now the leader, Kevin Carruthers. He, he came over when we were church planting in Rock Falls. He came over and helped us with the church plant for a little bit. Uh, and so this can be kind of his story. But next, next Sunday, we're going to have all the envelopes out there to help this ministry uh, that, that reaches out to so many different ways. Uh, and so you'll be hearing a little bit after this. Uh, and then after the video, you'll be dismissed. But one other thing, just ask you to pray for Renata and I. Uh, we're leaving for Chicago today. Last week we were gone that way. But uh, this, we're, Monday and Tuesday, we're, we help out with the North American Mission Board in assessing new people who are going out to help start new churches around the United States. And so it's, it's really intense, but we, uh, we just ask for you to pray for us and the other people who are assessing these people. Uh, we'll be back at 11 o'clock Tuesday night. Uh, so that's why Wednesday's all good. Uh, but I, I'll miss the clips again this week, so drink coffee for me. But, uh, no, I guess, yeah, whatever it is. Bye. Not flips, I'll go flips. Yeah. Bye. Bye. All right, so get that out of the way, but, but really look at this. Um, just listen to the ministries here, and then be dismissed after that. My mom loved history, and she loved to read, so she passed that on to me. And so we, we shared that passion throughout our years uh, together, and being part of Illinois Baptist, being part of the uh, mission of the Baptist Children's Home through the offering, and Coming over here with visits and those sorts of things was important to her uh, throughout the years. And she loved kids. She was a school teacher. And she took great joy. She spent over 30 years in the classroom. So she loved the Lord. And she wanted people to, to know Jesus. I think that's probably the most important thing that she would share. You know, you can have a lot of knowledge, but if you don't know Jesus, you don't know how to use that knowledge for Him and for His work, then uh, it's to no avail. That's what's at the heart of providing Christian services. Because the people that we serve, uh, whether they be teenagers or whether they be uh, young adults with unexpected pregnancies, or, or whether it's our pathways clients who come in, uh, they're dealing with pain, they're dealing with hurt, they're dealing with fear and uncertainty about being parents uh, or experiencing other kind of trauma. Uh, and how do you deal with the grief of loss? Uh, whether it be through death or divorce and those types of things. And um, that's what our staff, that's that's what I hope I can bring. Um, it, it is a, a pastoral, shepherd-like ministry to Baptist Children's Home Family Services in the day I would like to ask you to partner with the Baptist Children's Home by supporting the Mother's Day offering to help those who are hurting and grieving.
laid them down this morning and I forgot to lay it down. It's not a problem. Just okay. I told you, I didn't yes, remember that. Good. It's okay. She'll, she'll, uh, she'll take the one she gave us. I'll try to answer it. Oops, Lord, you might have to get That's my second time. The first time was good. I remember those two today.